All right, ladies and gentlemen, I guess you heard the difference there. This is Nichols Live, and you're listening to Larry Nichols. I am Larry Nichols. How do you say that? I am, or you're listening to, well, anyway, you're listening to Larry Nichols, or you're listening to me. Anyway, I get confused. <clears throat> now, it says they play the Larry Nichols intro rather than our intro. Oh, great. Uh, Greg, y'all had the other intro plugged in instead of this intro plugged in. We forgot that. Anyway, folks, we're trying. Uh, Greg, you might text me and tell me because what you did is you played the other intro. Anyway, folks, we have Alden is editing and fixing the program for us now. All right. Now, because of that, we should have, y'all should have heard what I heard, but you didn't hear what I heard. You heard the O thing that Greg and them did just to put up. Now, um, I tell you what, Alden, if you're there, can you play the intro that we play? Would you play that for the folks? They didn't hear it. Folks, this is the intro you'll hear. That's what you should have heard. Now, somebody text me at 440-897-0611, 440-897-0611, and tell me what you think of that for the bumper music versus what's been playing. I would just like to know. All right, guys, if you know somebody that's trying to listen in, you may want to give them our listen line. It is 401-283-6754, 401-283-6754. When they do that, then you press 1. Then you press 1. That's channel 1. And I just got a thingy, and it says your own. It great. It's great. Somebody said it was great. I think that was Chris. She liked that song. How do you like that intro? From now on, that will be the intro. And I've got news for you. I've got a news flash. Write this number down. Write this number down. Don't do it today. Because we're still texting today because Alden's trying to get the hang of it. Um, we're trying to get the feel of the program. Don't, but anyway, it's 501-499-6022. 501-499-6022. That's the number you will call to call into the program and talk. Yes, sir to talk. Pretty soon we're going to be off this text business and people are going to be able to call in and ask your questions or make your statement on the program. I told you we would get there. We've just been a little bit late, but we're getting there. All right. Having said all of that, where are we today? First off, let me remind everybody I want you to call. I want you to call. Wait a minute. I got a text and I didn't see it right. All right. The number is 501, Chris, not 401. It's 501-499-6022. I think. I think that's the number. Somebody correct me if it's wrong, please. (laughs) Now. (laughs) 
And I don't know what's going on. I'm getting something put here. So, somebody, uh, I tell you what, let's do this. Uh, Alden, text me the proper number. I seem to be being informed that instead of very code, 401, it's 501. Would you text me and tell me which it is, please? This will be for our call-in, our call-in to our program. Now, let's go back to where I was. I'm getting kind of turned around here. Uh, I'm getting bad turned around. Hold on. And right, here is the official number. The official number is all right, yes, the official number folks to call in to this program starting tomorrow is five oh one four nine nine six oh two two. Five oh one four nine nine six oh two two. The listen in line is four oh one two eight three six seven five four. All right, I tell you what we can do. I tell you what we can do to solve this because some someone's thinking that I'm wrong or we're wrong. All right, I'm gonna ask a favor of somebody, just one person. I want one person to call 501-499-6022. And let's just see, y'all, if they can get into me. Just one person, because I've got a lot i got to talk about on today's program, but we need this straightened out. Someone pick up the phone, now 501-499-6022, and let's see if it comes through and on the air. Someone come on. Now, with that, we'll get into our programming once this is done. Is somebody out there? Can somebody call in? We've got a lot to discuss today. I don't need to be doing all this about this number. Keep talking so that they will hear you. Who do I keep talking to, Alden? Somebody dial 501-499-6022 and see if you get into this program. And then we're going to see if we can patch you through. He said, awesome, it worked. I don't hear nobody, uh, Alden. Nobody came through. Oh, well, somebody call in, and I want to patch them through, Alden, one time. I want to patch one person through. Then we'll be through with this. One person, that's all I want to do. Just one person. Some one person. I just got a text from somebody that says, I don't know what has gotten into you. I don't know what's gotten into me either. What do you mean, listener? What has gotten into me? Um, now, while we're waiting for someone to patch through, to call in and patch through. I want to remind you, and by the way, yesterday I'm sorry about the way I was, the way I felt. They seemed to think it had nothing to do with blood clots. Thank goodness it seemed to be more the anesthesia or that stuff holding on and doing than the blood clots. Let's cross our fingers and hope it was that. Okay, Alden said he turned that program off. So don't worry about calling in, folks. You can't do it. He turned it off. But it did work. Somebody got through with the right number. So we do have that worked out. It was the right number. Okay. Now, for today's program, I want to remind you to call. Call Ryan's office. Call him. Call Paul Ryan's office at 202-225-3031. That's 
225-225-3031. Or you can call through the switchboard. 202-224-3121. That's 202-224-3121. Three zero two one three one two one. I'm sorry, three one two one. Now, you're going to call and read that script five times. Every one of you that can hear my voice five times. Greg, I'd like to see what we're looking like on the number sign today. But we need to call Paul Ryan's office five times, each one of you, and scare the Bahuda out of him. Scare it out of him, because he's fixing to meet with Trump. He needs to understand that meeting with Trump's not really just meeting with Trump. It's meeting with us. Us. And then Ryan put out that horrible, smart alecky release yesterday that if Trump wants him to step down as chairman of the convention, now remember that, that's of the convention. That's not step down as Speaker of the House. That's simply to step down as chairman of the convention. And folks, that don't mean nothing. That don't mean nothing. It really doesn't. So don't, you know, he didn't do anybody any favor, period. No favors at all. And if he had said he'd step down as Speaker of the House, now we're getting somewhere, but he didn't say that. What he actually did in political speak, in political speak, he thumbed his finger at us and Trump. And basically told us to go to hell. He sure did. That's exactly what he did. Because <clears throat> he doesn't want to be there anyway. He does not want to be there anyway. So now, we're going to call Paul Ryan's office and read the script. And let him know, let him know what that script says, that we don't appreciate him. And if he doesn't support the nominee of the people, then we're going to see to it that he never holds office again. By the way, we're collateralizing, I hope you understand, Sarah Palin and what she's doing by backing the guy that's running against him. Yep, we're making a difference. Now, let me tell you, it's been done before. See, there was another Speaker of the House. His name was Tom Foley. Do y'all remember him? Do any of you remember Tom Foley? If you do, I'm going to tell you a story about him. He was all powerful years ago. Oh, wow. You got to be kidding, Greg. Call in line in internet net today exceeds 5.2 thousand, 5,200, I guess what we should be saying. We busted 5,000 today, folks. We busted five thousand today what a milestone for us what a milestone because you see remember we're headed to ten thousand by month's end that's terrific that is terrific hope you are as excited about that as i am that's significant big time now before i get any further into foley and you need to hear this story because it connects to what we're doing today. Let's go to our first commercial. Guys, today, I 
me 500. You notice I took the we out and I said I. Today is a maintenance day of 500. I have no way to hit it. None. I got no way but y'all. That's it. It's just you. So if you're out there, please go to PayPal and go to PayPal and then Nichols Live at AOL.com. That's my PayPal account, Nichols Live at AOL.com, which, by the way, is my email account as well. We go to PayPal. And help me kick it off, please. Please kick it off. We've got 45 minutes to get 500. Please help me. Please help me. Punch PayPal now. Let's make it start now so I don't have to get nervous and sweat it out. Please. Now, Tom Foley, he was Speaker of the House. He was powerful. All power. Nobody could touch Foley. Now, I kept telling Foley, I want there to be hearings on Bill Clinton, Whitewater. There needed to be hearings on what he was doing with the womanizing and what all he had been involved with. But no, Tom Foley wasn't going to let us have him. He was blocking him at every turn. And I said to him, Foley, either you fix it to where, which we had some congressmen who were trying to bring uh, hearings to the floor, but he wouldn't allow them. He was blocking him, being speaker. I told him, either do it or I'd get him. Now, do y'all understand what I told Tom Foley myself to his ears? I told him, either allow for these hearings to go forward or I will get you. Well, he didn't. Larry Patterson and I go speak. Out, I can't remember what town it was in his district, but, or his state, I can't remember what it was, state wise, where it was. Patterson, I go, we're coming in from the airport, we're riding in this van, and everywhere we go, y'all, I mean, it's just people walking, people walking, and Gosh, you know, just people walking down the streets like they were all dressed up, some of them going to something, you know, kind of important. And I didn't know what it was. And I asked people, I said, what on earth? They, they didn't know. Well, we just kept going this block after block after block of people walking. And then we get to this place. Well, it turns out they said, Foley's got a big event at the convention center, and we're going to be across the street at this school auditorium. I said, high school auditorium. I said, well, then that's it. That's where these people are going to that big thing for Foley. We get to where we were going, and on the right side of the road is the way we were coming in. You know, that was our place. On the left was this huge dome kind of building, and that was the convention center. And there, folks, in what we could see of the convention center at that point were all these satellite trucks for the media. I mean, you know, it looked impressive. And then as we pulled around the corner, we were looking in awe at all the trucks and stuff in his parking lot there. And we get around the corner, y'all, and you know what we saw? There was them satellite trucks as everywhere. But there was no cars there. Not a one. No cars. Didn't have a car there. What it turned out, much to our shock, 
if you looked over to our right side, oh my God, there was a huge line of people going around this block, and we thought, well, that might, Larry and I thought to ourselves, or we said to each other, wonder what they got going on. Some movie or something must be debuting. Because, I mean, people were just lined up as far as you can see and went around the block. Well, folks, come to find out. Come to find out those people were there to see Larry and I. That's right. They were sat there to see Larry Patterson. There were so many people that the fire chief came and shut us down at 1,800 per auditorium. The auditorium would hold 1,200, but the fire chief let 1,800 in. Now get this. With that many people that were there, we couldn't let them all in. So what I agreed to do was do, Larry and I would do what we call the show, it's really not, but we said we'd do one thing, let everybody leave, and then we'd do another, and we'd let everybody leave until, you know, everybody got to come in. We did three, three different shows where we let them in, let people come in, and let them leave. And by the way, I'd always, always, if somebody wanted to shake my hand, if they were willing to come out and get something autographed or whatever, if they was willing to do that, then by George, I was willing to stay. I was, I did, I would. And I never charged a penny. I never charged a penny for people to come hear me speak or Larry and I. Now, the people that were throwing the vent, they could charge a little bit. I'd let them charge a little bit to cover the expenses of getting us there. But I never allowed for nobody to charge for me. I ain't worth nothing. Those people came three times in and out, three times in and out. Finally, I had to go outside and use the fire chief's bullhorn and I spoke to all of the rest of the people outside that night on a bullhorn. It was a great night, great night. But then the media all came in. When I got out there on that blowhorn or bullhorn and that media drove there across the street and there wasn't nothing going on, I mean, they didn't have hardly a car. They came over. Here we are outside. And I'm telling you, the media is just ready to jump on me. They're ready to let me have it, as was the case normally, if the media bothered to show up at all, the mainstream. Well, here they come. Question and answer period when we're outside that last time, out on that bullhorn. <laughs> And they, uh, some reporter hollered out, well, what do you think about Tom Foley and his race? And I said, Tom Foley, you mean Lips Foley? Lord of mercy. When I said Lips Foley, <laughs> That place went quiet. I don't even think, I think cars stopped driving by when I said lips fully. And some reporter hollered out, lips fully. I said, yeah, that's what everybody in Washington calls him. This is what he mean calling him lips fully. I said, that's because he's queer. <laughs> you would have thought. You'd have thought I hung the Pope. Them reporters just shot out of that parking lot where all them people were gathered, ran over to that big dome building where Tom Foley was, but there wasn't nobody else. Now, when we gave that talk there, <clears throat> it was two weeks from the election. 
Foley was running against a no name that nobody had ever heard of. He didn't have a chance to win. Foley was up 22 points, and this is two weeks out from the election. Next day, when that story lips Foley hit, in two weeks, he lost the election by 11 to a man that nobody had ever heard of much. His name is Ed Thune. Thune. Thune eventually ended up becoming the senator. And by the way, I have still to this day never as yet gotten one thank you, one appreciate what you did, one attaboy. I haven't gotten anything. But that wasn't what I did it for. I did it to fulfill a pledge I had made to Tom Foley. And that's somebody else you can add to that letter when you say dial 1-800-BILL-CLINTON and ask him if I say I'll do something, ask Clinton if I'll do it. Well, there's somebody else you can ask, Tom Foley. Ask him if Larry Nichols says he will get you. Ask old Tom Foley if you can get him because he ain't in Washington or he may be doing the lobbyist work, but he's not a congressman, and he's not Speaker of the House. You see, that kind of stuff just didn't happen back then in that day. I mean, when you were Speaker of the House, you were solid. You, you never lost your job as Speaker of the House. Now, also, I would tell you Somebody like old John McCain. He's always been a senator, right? And once he's always been a senator, he'll always be a senator. That's the way it's supposed to be. But it don't have to be that way now. Not with you. Not with you calling. Not with what we've been doing. No, sir. It don't have to be that way no more. No more. We're changing things. We are. You and me, we're the ones changing it. And we are going to change it, folks. We're going to get this government back somehow, some way. All right, here we go. Look at this. Alden. The man producing the program for nothing for us has sent in $10. Now, please, come on, y'all. Don't leave it up to Alden and Bob and Carl and his crew. Everybody chip in, please. Chip in. It's not time for the commercial, so I won't. Do you get the story about Tom Foley, Speaker of the House, do y'all get the importance of that story? I mean, it's a real story. Check history out. Real story. And I'll bet you, I'll bet you, we can yank Paul Ryan out of that Speaker of the House chair just as easy as Foley went down. Just as easy. And it might be that I know something. No, I said I didn't say that right. It might be that what I know about Paul Ryan, that he doesn't want out, push time to shove. You know what? I might just have to feel compelled to bring it out. And I wonder when his nasty secret is told, whether people in Wisconsin will vote for him again. Huh? You reckon?
You reckon the people in his state will vote for him if a nasty enough secret about him, true of course, came out public? Tell me that old boy ain't all he's matched out or made out to be. And if he doesn't do what's right by Donald Trump, then I will meet Paul Ryan and I will make sure what he doesn't want out gets out. And you have my word on that. You have my word. Now, my second commercial, we've gotten some odd total of $10 out of 500. We're 490 away. Can somebody please ding PayPal and go to Nichols Live at AOL.com? Nichols Live at AOL.com. I'm trying to do my part. My part. I really am. I'm really trying to take what I know and use it, if nothing else, for one last time to make a difference. And I've got a lot of enemies in power positions where people are afraid. And with your help, we will teach them a lesson. With your help, we will teach them the reason our founding fathers were so smart, such geniuses, about building the system that we have to govern us. And don't worry. I'm not going to let some creep like Paul Ryan. I'm not going to let him use his power. I'm not, not going to let him use his power and deny the people of the United States of America, the country, that our children and grandchildren deserve. I won't do it. So now, Please ding the PayPal. Please ding it. Go to PayPal and it's Nichols Live at AOL.com. We're 490 short. I'm 490 short. Can't you please help? Please. Please help. Now, That's it. I can't. Uh, I just can't believe that we can't get to the 490 more. I just can't believe it. Please help me. Help me. We've got to get it today. One hour after I leave this program, I have to let them know whether I'm coming or I'm not. If you're out there, let me know. If you are out there, let me know. People aren't even sending me messages today. I don't know. I know people are listening, but nobody's texting. Now, the other story today. Carol Chaplin called me. And uh, she was quite upset because the story has come out. I don't know where all it's out at, but I heard Limbaugh yesterday on one of the trips that I made to the hospital. I heard him talking about it. He was talking about this deal we made with the rent. Now, 
The guy that made the deal with Iran that works for Obama, I cannot remember his name. He's a worthless piece of crap, so he's not worthy of me remembering his name. But uh, hold on, let me see what I got here. says here a couple of things. Lion Ted is holding his delegates and indicates that he won't rail out getting back into the race, that it's far from over. Lion Ted's full of junk. And then here's one. We're here, Larry, checking my cards balance now. Cards. Thank you. Thank you. Well, where I was going was this. It's about the deal made with Iran. The deal made with Iran. The guy that made the deal turns out he was about 30 something years old. Never had any experience in international affairs at all, which is kind of unique because, you know, that's what they're knocking Trump over. They're knocking Trump and saying, well, he can't be a good president because he's got zero international experience other than setting up beauty pageants. Well, it just so happens that the one of the biggest deals in Obama's goofy administration is this deal with, with Iran, and it was put together by a meathead that's never had anything to do with any kind of foreign relations. And they're coming out now. Are you sitting down? I hope you are. They're coming out this week, and guess what they're saying? Well, they're laughing. Oh, they're laughing. That's what had Carol so upset. They're laughing. You know why? Because they lied. They knew they were lying, and the American people didn't get it, and the media didn't catch it. And they are doing their high fives and their victory dances and their their celebrations because guess what? They pull one over on the American people, which is us. Now, let me tell you what I knew about the deal. I went everywhere. Matter of fact, tonight, if I can at all, I will be going on with Pastor Ernie Sanders. Pastor Ernie Sanders. The program is What's Right, What's Left. Go to go to Pastor Ernie Sanders on the internet. Ernie Sanders. Like Bernie Sanders, but with a, with an E. He is no Bernie Sanders in any way. <laughs> but go on his program tonight. I'll be there at about... Uh, Nine, well, about nine o'clock central time. Now, the first 30 minutes is preaching. Needless to say, I don't do a lot near in that part, but I listen. Very important is ministry part. I listen. But then about 9.30 central time, I'll come on. And you will hear me there verify what I'm going to tell you now. I told him on his program months, 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 months ago when the deal was being done, when the deal was being put together, I had gotten word from Benny Netanyahu, a friend of mine, what the real deal was, what was actually being negotiated in that thing, in that contract. It wasn't at all what they were telling the Cicerainian deal was. Anybody that was there at the time remembers, we agreed, we agreed to buy oil from Iran for $25 a barrel. Why? Why is that a bad deal? That's a good deal for us, right? No, it's a bad deal, but it is a good deal, but it's a bad deal. The deal was made to hurt Saudi Arabia put their oil business on its knees. We did it. Did it specifically to hurt Saudi Arabia. 
Now, in case the deal got found out and people realized how bad a deal this was for America, you know what they had in there? Iran agreed to buy 25 million automobiles from America. Oh, wow. 25 million automobiles. What's that about? What would that have been in there for? But now remember, it wasn't ever going to be real. But what was it in there about? It was in there to make people go for the deal. Why? Because, you see, they could take all the old automotive labor unions, and then they were going to come out in support of it, even if people found that it wasn't that good of a deal. They're going to support it. just to make sure the unions and all the liberal people come and the Democrats come in behind and support it. Kind of a tricky little shot there when you say, didn't need it, didn't end it up, they didn't need it. And there's more stuff in there that I'm not going through. But I hadn't told you the worst part of it yet. You know what the worst part was? Hmm? goodly portion. Now y'all listen to Pastor Ernie Sanders tonight. You listen to it tonight. Go to What's Right, What's Left, his ministry. What's Right, What's Left. Pastor Ernie Sanders. Look it up on the internet thing. It'll be there. But you'll hear me say what I'm going to say now. So that you'll know I said it back then. I'm not just making it up now. There's another part of that deal that no one knows yet still, but it's going to come out. And they're going to laugh. They're going to laugh about it like they're laughing about all the other stuff that they sucked us into on this thing. You know what it is? Of the $150 billion that we're giving to Iran, make this deal come true. From the $150 billion we're giving to Iran put this thing through. Of the $150 billion, $50 billion of that was to go to ISIS. Yes, ISIS form the unification of Islam. Goes to ISIS to form this unification of Islam, the unification of Islam, the unification of Islam. Yeah. How about that? How about that? Look at this. Dixie, thank you. Dixie sent a hundred. God bless you, Dixie. Now to the four ninety, we're three ninety away. Please, y'all, come on. Help. Thank you, Dixie. Bless your heart. Thank you, honey. Think about it, y'all. We, me and you. This is where this thing gets so filthy. This is where it gets so dirty that it's no wonder we can't sleep at night. No wonder we can't seem to get the filth off of us when we wash our hands. It's no wonder you can't get it off of you. Because we... We are being used and laughed at, put together. Something to stop this when at the whole time we're funding this. We're funding it. It's hard to figure. For you it is. I assure you, it's hard to figure. Now, between Trump 
and what they're doing trying to stop him. Lion Ted, what he's trying to do to stop us. I mean, it all gets boiled in this mess. It's the exact stuff that uh, we got to stop. We have got to stop it, and the only way we have to stop it is through Donald Trump. Now, it's commercial three. Here we go, guys. Here we go. Here it is. This is the last commercial. I just got word. It's 12.20 a.m. 12.20 a.m. The word, 12.20 a.m. I guess you looked that up right on the computer, and that's where you'll find Pastor Sanders' program, 12.20 a.m. or radio or whatever. Okay, guys, this is it. 390 short. It's 147 right now. If you can, please pop the dinger. Please pop it. Punch it, I mean. We've, I've got to ask you to do it. You know, it's little things, little bits of stories like this little thing about Iran. Sure, now... <coughs> Sure, now the Washington Post and some of these other people. Sure, now they're finding out. Guess what? We got lied to. Guess what? The Obama administration, they're jumping up and down laughing heartily at this. That they pulled it off and nobody caught it. Nobody caught it. That's why I think our program is needed. That's give out your PayPal account again, please. Okay. I'm gonna take it back. I put the please. She didn't exactly put the please in. Please help me get it. Please, somebody punch. PayPal right now. And uh, please go to PayPal. If I don't get it, I get in trouble. Bad sick. I need your help. I need your help. We've got, it's 149, 149, 11 minutes. Can somebody please punch PayPal? Oh, Chris said give PayPal address, please. Okay. My PayPal address, go to PayPal. My address is Nichols Live at AOL.com. Nichols Live at AOL.com. Now, up at the top, as I'm told, there's one side that says product, and the other side says gift or donation. Do not push product or whatever, purchase, don't, because I don't get it if you do that. Just put it into the button that says donation. Donation. That's where you got to hit with it. I uh, don't have anything to sell, and when it goes in, as a purchase, then it jams everything up. Now, nobody has seen anything. We're 390 away. Please, dear God. Ten minutes left. 
In 10 minutes, I got to tell the hospital one thing or another. Bless Bob's heart. Bob sent $10. Thank you, Bob. Bob just keeps sending. I don't see how he does it, but he does. So we're 380 away. Dear God, somebody, please help. Reach out. We three anyway. And what I was saying before the commercial and, and before begging for money, what I was saying is just the truth. You know, the whole purpose of me telling you these things and so that you know them in advance, so that hopefully they're out there in advance, so that we can do something. We, and not just sit back and hear about it when it's too late and it's over. Please help. I know this stuff before it comes, and I can, as our numbers climb like they are today. As our numbers are climbing and we're getting to the place we need to be, I'm telling you, help me. And when we get to these places where the, where the moments of opportunity arrive, we will be ready to take advantage of them and we will save this country. We will. We can. I'm just asking for y'all to help me. Help me be here so I can deal with it. I mean, I'm trying every way I can to do what I can. Okay, here's something. I can't get PayPal loaded on my phone, sending 20 your way, but Mission Joe trying to send it. Mark me down for 20. Okay, thank you. Truly don't know what to do. I don't know. And by the way, today, just another little with seven minutes left. I shouldn't talk about it because I'm nervous, but I got to do something to kill the time. I've got seven minutes to get $380. Please help me get it. I got a bow in to check out today. Now, this is a long bow. Remember the longbow that I told you about? One is the crossbow. Some of you have gotten it. I'm proud of you. Some of you have gotten it and you can't jock it, so we're dealing with that. We're going to end up getting the 9 or $10 one that you can jock easily. But the uh, recurve longbow, the one that we've talked about, for a couple of weeks now. The one I've got is 20 pound draw. That means when you pull it back, it's like pulling 20 pounds. And it doesn't stack. Stacking means that you pull it back further back, you get the harder it gets to pull. No, this pulls back linearly. When you pull back, it's the same all the way. But here's the deal, folks. Here's the deal. There was another bow by the same company that I wanted to see. I got it for us to look at. 12 pounds. 12 pounds. Twelve pounds draw. It's 48 inches long instead of 54. It's nice. It's 12 pounds. And I don't care who you are, but you can pull a 12 pound bow back to protect yourself. And then we're not talking about 50 yard shots either. No sense training for that. 
That's not what you're going to be meeting. Okay. Uh, totally renewed sent 27. Thank you. Totally renewed. So what is that? With five minutes left, let's see. We're at 380. It's going to be 360. 360. Be 353 away. Is that what we're at? 350 field three away. 353. But anyway, so with the bow at 12 pounds, you you will not believe it shoots just one shot on a chromograph. It shot out at like 97 feet per second. Folks, you don't want to be shot by that bow. In tight styrofoam, it had like six inches penetration with a practice tip. That's not, you know, a real sharp bladed, uh, that's not a sharp bladed broadhead sword in the blade. I'm going to teach you how to defend yourself. This I'm going to do. I'm trying to find things that you can buy that are relatively inexpensive, relatively so. The crossbow. The crossbow for, you know, the people have ordered, then there's a crossbow that I'm going to probably have men and women get in the car. You know, we're going to find a way to get that for you. I'm doing everything I can to help. Because, folks, I believe this thing's coming down. I believe it's coming down. And we've got to be ready. You've got to be ready. With all that said, we've got two minutes. Two minutes. Till it's over today. Can you help me? Well, I guess the answer is pretty clear. I'm sorry. If there's anybody out there, I sure could use it because we are out of time. We are out of time today. And every day, this time, it gets nervous and I get scared and I wonder if we're going to miss it. Every day, this time. And I promise you this, I have made the promise to my family and I've made it to you. If I can't get the treatment and I can't get in fact, if I'm back like I was, I just can't come on. I can't do that to you I can't do it. To be honest, you can't do it to me either. So with that, we got one minute left. Somebody out there has got a miracle that you can pull out of a hat for $353 or however much it is. Please pull it. Please pull it. And if the news doesn't change tomorrow, I'll try to teach you all how and some simple things you can do to defend yourself in a day that's bound to be coming. There we go. Somewhere over the rainbow. Up high, there's a land that I've heard of.